Hi everybody. Well, I hope you've had a couple of good days settling in at base camp and that everybody's feeling nice and acclimatized. But I'm afraid we can't put this off any longer. We're going to have to crack on with this now. So today marks the day that we are going to make our attempt on the summit of Everest, the rooftop of the world, the highest point on the face of planet Earth. So let's get going without further ado. Um, we have already rested up nicely. So we need to have a little talk about the equipment that we're going to need to uh, try and climb this mountain with. So you are going to need um, rope, you're going to need carabiners, these things here that clip onto the ropes and a harness to keep you fixed onto um, the ropes that you clip into. What's happened before we've arrived, as I'm sure you've picked up during your time at base camp, is the whole mountain has been covered in fixed ropes by the Sherpas, the Nepalese climbers who are here every climbing season around about this time of year, April, May time of year, to put everything in place that is needed by the people who come to climb the mountain. So as long as we're clipped into that rope that leads all the way up the mountain, we can't ever go too far wrong or fall too far if we happen to slip. Things that are going to help us on our way up are crampons, which are things that are kind of metal spikes that are either built into our boots or strapped over the top of them. That means that we can get a firm foothold and grip on ice. We obviously need a helmet um, just in case anything should happen and we should tumble and slip and be in danger of hitting our head on rocks. And then we also need these pieces of specialist equipment that you can see down in the bottom corner of your screen called ice axes that you use as a pair and kind of uh, dig into the ice and use to pull yourself up on and secure yourself on the mountain at the same time. So pack everything up, get everything on, let's get kitted up, let's get ready to do this. But let's also presume that we are going to make it to the top and you're going to bring something with you, a personal memento, uh, possibly a photograph of someone in your family, possibly a poem, possibly a flag from your national country, possibly your prayer flag that you made recently, something to leave on the summit just to show that you have been there. And whatever you do, do not forget your camera because you don't want to get to the top of the highest mountain in the world and not have a picture to prove it. If it's a phone you're bringing, make sure it's really well kind of wrapped up and waterproofed and make sure that the battery is charged too. Okay, so in a minute I am going to get you to pause this video and watch the video that I have linked below because that is going to explain to you your route up the mountain and where you will camp on your way up towards the summit. It's going to take you about three days or so from this point, including on the last day when you push for the summit, probably getting up just after midnight. So you've got a whole day to um, try and reach the top of the mountain. Um, to give yourself as much chance as you can of actually getting there and doing it. So when you watch this video, um, don't be perturbed, don't be put off. You can do this, but do pay particular attention to the crossing of the ice fall, which is something we're going to have to do pretty much as soon as we set off. Um, it's a little bit hairy. There are some ladders across big gaps. Um, the ice fall is basically a sort of jumbly piece of um, ground where you've got huge blocks, you know, some of them uh, blocks of ice the size of houses, and big deep crevasses which are holes in the side of the mountain which kind of disappear down into blackness. So it's not for the faint hearted but it's an incredible piece of landscape 
So do pay particular attention to that in the video. And also look out for the Hillary Step, which is another piece of um, famous Everest landscape, which is named after the first ball, one of the two people to first successfully climb the mountain and is the last real obstacle in the way of getting to the top once you reach that sort of summit ridge. So pause this video now, watch the video that's linked below, and then come back in a second. Hi, right, so we're almost there. We're almost ready to have a crack. And I wanna say again that you can do this, even though only around 4,000 people in the whole history of the world have ever climbed Everest, some of them more than once, in fact, one or two Sherpas, I think, with the record now, have actually climbed this mountain 21 times, and that's sure to be broken again as soon as people are allowed to climb. But there is no reason, as we said, that you cannot do it. Just recently, a man um, climbed the equivalent of the height of Everest in his own home. Uh, it took him about three days by walking up and down his stairs in all his climbing equipment. And you can read about that story um, on Twinkle. So get your gear on, decide how many times you need to climb the stairs or a step ladder or whatever you have and off you go, make it a challenge. So what we'll do now is we will just um, get our gear on here together just to um, get you uh, get you primed and get you going. So um, I should have a helmet, but I haven't uh, got a helmet with me, but I'm gonna go for a hat to keep warm. I'm gonna go for a, uh, a head torch because that's gonna keep me, um, you know, help me see things when I get up at 12 o'clock to, um, to start that summit push on the last day of the climb. Um, I'm going to need something to protect my eyes because there is a lot of glare that um, that comes off the the snow on a mountain. So goggles or glasses, something just to keep my eyes safe. I'll probably put something on my lips because they can get very dry. Skin can get very dry and chapped in the harsh, um, thin air of the mountain. I'm going to put my uh, down jacket on here to keep me uh, warm against the elements um, and I've got gloves as well that I'm going to put on uh, to protect my hands a uh, really vital um, piece of equipment and if you ever you know lose a glove or drop a glove you must immediately stop and pick it back up got my oxygen here which I'm going to wear on my back and there will be a regulator through to my mouth because we've talked about how little oxygen there is in the air and I've got my ice axes to help me climb up that mountain. So just going back to you and your attempt on Everest, um, what we're going to say is that you need to um, set yourself a challenge before you take off, okay, uh, and decide whether it's going to be, um, you know, th 30 times up the stairs, or is it going to be 50, or if you don't have stairs and you've just got a one step up or a step ladder, set the, the number of times that you are going to go up that in all your gear, before you go and um, then just go ahead and do it make it a challenge um, you know don't make it something that's too easy because you've got to earn this feeling of being at the top of the world and then when you have completed the challenge that you've set yourself do make sure to take a picture or a video of those last few steps to the top of the mountain and share it with us Hi, welcome back down. So you climbed Mount Everest and you have joined an exclusive club. Massive congratulations. High five. So what can you do now once you've recovered? 
where can you go with this interest, with this knowledge you've got? What can you find out about next? Well, just a couple of ideas to leave you with. You may like the idea of finding out about the Yeti, the mythical snowman that is reputed to live in the Himalayas that may or may not be real. You might want to investigate this idea and this story. We have a book based on mountains and mountain communities on Twinkle called The Man Who Bought a Mountain. You may be interested in that. We have mountain fact files. We have mountain fact cards. You could get interested in finding out what the tallest mountain is in each of the other continents. There may be a mountains top trump game waiting to be made, or you could just dive further into the history of Everest, find out about some of the first attempts to climb it, find out about the successful, the first successful attempt to climb it, um, you could do, you know, any one of hundreds of things uh, off the back of your virtual climb of Mount Everest. So all that's left for me to do is just congratulate you again on your climb. Thank you very much for joining me on this virtual expedition. And um, I will just finish up by saying take care. And hopefully see you all soon on another expedition sometime.